So here we're going to look at the evolu evolutionary path to apes. So I've had uh, some students that look like this, kind of when I'm giving lectures, and then when they realize all the slides where I say there's a test tomorrow, typically students may kind of switch and kind of look like this. And we're going to talk about these two particular types of monkeys and what makes them each unique. So starting with the evolutionary path. So the story of humans of evolution begins around 65 million years ago with the Archonta. It's a small group of aboriginal animals that were primarily insectivores, beneath fed on insects. They underwent an explosive radiation uh, that gave them a rise to different types of mammals, including bats and primates. Now I say radiation, we're not talking about like nuclear waste radiation, we're talking about radiation in the sense of how they're organized in a cloud gram. So this radiation means there's a lot of branching that's occurring. A lot of diversification is a way to think about it. So the earliest primates have two distinctive features that allow them to succeed in this uh, aboriginal insect eating environment. Grasping fingers and toes and overlapping binocular vision. So you can see here evidence of our grasping fingers and toes to climb limbs, hang from branches, and use tools. The overlapping binocular vision using two eyes lets the brain judge distance precisely. So our binocular vision, when our eyes overlap, we're able to determine how far an object may be close or away from us. So if you know anyone who has damage to one of their eyes, they may be restricted from playing certain sports because of their lack of depth perception. About 40 million years ago, so MYA stands for a million years ago, the earliest primates split into two groups. And we have this kind of before monkeys group that we kind of allocate here. And it's a smaller group. They're probably nocturnal and herbivores. Only a few survive today, so they're very ancient. And as a result, the monkeys that now have kind of developed in hominids kind of have replaced or reduced the amount of these particular monkeys that are around. So higher primates include monkeys, apes, and humans. These are diurnal and herbivores. So remember, diurnal is referring to organisms that are awake during the day, compared to our nocturnal, our organisms that mainly function at night. They also evolved bigger brains, uh, improved senses, and adapted for daytime foraging live in groups with complex social interactions, and tend to care for their young for prolonged periods of time. These are all examples of this particular um, type of monkey being diurnal versus the predecessors, which were mostly nocturnal. Early um, anthropods are now extinct. Anthropoids, sorry, are now extinct, and they evolved in Africa. Their direct descendants are Old World and also New World monkeys. So I refer to Old World monkeys. These are ones that kind of stayed in Africa, split into kind of two lineages, the Old World and the hominids, and mainly ground dwellers um, and don't have a prehensile tail. The New World monkeys, though, as you see here in South America and Central America, they it's where they migrated to. They developed in isolation and are aboriginal. They also have that prehensile tails. This is an example of what a new, oh, I'm sorry, an old world monkey would look like. This is just an example of a new world monkey. Now we're comparing our apes to hominids. Hominids evolved from these. And apes and hominids and humans are the direct descendants, or, in, or the direct ancestors. So directly descended from these hominids. Chimpanzees are the closest living human relatives because they share about 98.4% of their nuclear DNA. Gorillas and humans share about 97.7%. Put that in perspective. Uh, what percentage of your genes do you share with other organisms? Well, it's about 98% with the chimpanzees, 92% with the mouse, believe it or not, 44% with the fruit fly, 26% with yeast, and 18% with the plant. So you can see there is still a fair amount of overlap, even though we might be very different compared to organisms that might even be in different kingdoms. Comparing apes to hominids, we see our similar structures in the same colors here. There's also some distinct differences. So the femur, in this case, is angled out. Here, our femur is angled in. Our pelvis is, for us, is bowl-shaped. For the chimpanzee, it's long and narrow. And you can see, again, some of the comparisons that are derived here. The common ancestor for both apes and hominids is thought to have been an 
aberral climber. Hominids became bipedal, which means walking upright, bi meaning two, pedal meaning walking, walking upright with two legs. Apes evolved knuckle walking, and that's what you kind of see here, the kind of hunched over appearance. There's anatomical differences between the two are related to a bipedal locomotion. So when you're walking uh, upright, certain things are going to kind of shift in shape to make it more efficient than if you're what's called a knuckle walker, kind of that hunched over look. So the concept of bipedalism seems to have evolved as our ancestors left dense forests for grasslands and open woodlands. So if you're in and amongst the trees, there's a lot of overgrowth, this kind of knuckle walking, hunched over um, way of getting around might be advantageous. However, when you go to the open field here, upright and bipedalism is definitely favored. The question is, did bi bipedalism precede or succeed brain enlargement? You know, which came first? Fossils unearthed in Africa demonstrate that bipedalism exceeded, uh, extended back 4 million years ago. Substantial brain expansion, on the other hand, did not appear until 2 million years ago. So this evidence suggests that bipedalism occurred before brain expansion. Now, as I mentioned, bipedalism, if you've seen uh, videos online, maybe of dogs walking with like purses here upright, this is not an example of true bipedalism. This is simply an, an animal that's kind of learned to kind of walk upright. The true bipedalism here, we see the change in structural features, causing it to be more efficient for that particular organism to walk in this upright fashion.